fuck around him. Oh, hey, yo, yo, hey, what? I just drove up on a Porsche, skirt it off, and no Porsche, hey, stand on my wrist, chop off. What's up guys, not here, and if you want text that looks like the preview that was shown previously, then just watch this tutorial. Today we got an Element 3D tutorial. This one is a texture based tutorial, well not necessarily textures, but textures and like reflect reflectiveness on your text. We're going to get a nice glossy reflective text. But uh, first off, I just want to shout out my boy at Rao period effects on Instagram and Twitter for originally showing me this and putting me on. I kind of took it into my own little thing, um, but the basis is still what he showed. So, um, yeah, go give him a follow and follow me at ByAstronaut on Instagram and Twitter for more tutorials in the future. Let's just cut to the cakes and get straight to the tutorial. So first off, guys, we got this project file in the description below. You're going to open it and you're going to get one um, necessarily clip in here, and all that is is this all. Uh, wallpaper desktop clip of the sunset i like this one uh when you're doing this sort of reflective text or anything with this uh, vibrancy and color because it just works out really nice in the end product as you'll see um but yeah let's get straight into the tutorial so first off we're going to start by dragging this in the timeline um this is completely preference you don't have to do this but i just like to do this um we're going to put instant 4k on this just so that we can get it to the comp size and keep most of the quality even though if we upscaled it, it's not going to really get rid of a lot of the quality all right now we can actually disable this clip but first i'm going to make this into a, a pre-composition and then we're going to disable this we're going to rename it to env All right, and that just stands for environment. This should already be labeled E3D and tutorial, just so you guys don't get confused. We can actually disable this layer too, and we're gonna go straight into the Element 3D layer. So um, to get these two into the Element 3D, first we're gonna come to render, render settings and physical environment. This is to override the physical environment layer um, with the environment layer that you just made it into an environment layer. Uh, you'll see what this does later, and I'll explain it to you in more in depth. So we're just going to click environment layer and we don't have to touch anything else right now. But then we're going to come to um, custom layers, custom text and masks, path layer one. And we're going to do tutorial because that's our text layer. And then we don't have to do anything else to that. So just close that up and we're going to hop right into scene setup. All right, we're going to come up here to extrude. I'm assuming you guys already know the basics of element 3D. Um, I don't use anything outside of the default presets of element 3D. Um, I don't have like uh, pro shaders or anything like that. I, I don't really see it necessary. So first off, we're gonna come make this a little bigger. Tee that down a little bit. Actually, first off, we're gonna come to bevels. See, these are all the default bevels. Just drag a random one on. Then we're gonna come tee this up again. Cause my boy likes to be turned. Come to materials. Now when going for these um, really glossy type materials and stuff like that, really high reflectivity, there's a few different choices you could use. Um, I like anything glossy or high reflectivity and you could see it kind of in the preview. Uh, for sake of tutorial, we're going to stick to Chrome. Uh, so just open up this and drag Chrome on, on the two outside layers. Now this is totally preference again, but I like to do it. Um, I have different variations of what I like to do to the middle one, um, or the back one, but for this one we're just going to drag on the bright light, because it works good with it, and I'm actually going to change this bright light color to a reddish whitish color, just to match the text a little more. Alright, now you can just click OK, and we're going to make that text a little bigger just so that we could work with it better. Alright, now that should be good. Now you see, when we take this off and click none this is what our text looks like without our environment layer and when we put it back on that's what it looks like with the environment layer so what i like to do actually before getting into that we're going to come to our glow since we did put a bright light on and we're going to enable it we're going to turn down the glow a little bit 
increase the threshold and then turn down the radius just a tad all right so we got this nice little kind of effect going on with the middle layer and then what I like to do with the environment layer, um, just to give it a little more animation, a little more movement, like you're moving through an actual space. Um, typically, I only stick with, it also depends on the camera movement in the scene, but typically I only like to stick with two different keyframe movements for this, and that's the Z and Y rotation. For this one, we're going to stick with the Y rotation. And we're going to keyframe it at zero in the beginning, and then we're going to go to the end keyframe and keyframe it to negative one so this is going to do a negative 360 degree rotation when we when we uh go through the clip and we'll play that back all right so we got this kind of nice little effect like almost like this wave ripple effect going on because of the texture and then what we could even do more in depth is we could to make it look like something's actually affecting this is we could make it go into frame like this so we're gonna play that back See, and even though that there's no atmosphere in this space, it still looks like something is ex is affecting the text as it moves through this space. Um, you could play with the rotation a little bit to kind of make this effect go slower, um, but that's all preference to how you want it to look in the end. But what we could even do more is say we don't like this red, we want to go into our environment layer. We're just going to come add hue slash saturation. Let's say we want a nice little, nice little blue we got going on here. And then boom. We got this nice little gl blue glow thing with this red little underglow in it. But what we could even do more to make it build sort of this atmosphere that I was talking about. Maybe put a little S glow on there. For y'all don't know what S glow is, it's Sapphire Glow. Uh, go check them out, really good plugins. Boom, now that we're almost done with this, maybe we're like, hey, listen, I like it and all, but um, I feel like I kind of want this to flicker a little bit when it's going through this little space. So we're going to come up as flicker. And I'm not going to really mess with it, but you can get the gist of it. It's going to flicker this glow. And there you go guys that's basically it. you get this nice beautiful text so yeah if you'd like to see more uh tutorials in the future please put in the comments down below what you'd like to see tutorials on I'm gonna be trying to do at least one a week again shout out to my boy at rao period effects on instagram and twitter uh go drop a follow to my instagram and twitter too at by astronaut um just to stay updated on my content thanks guys